I'm here with Eric Metaxas, a New York Times best-selling author of many books, and uh, he just spoke at our church uh, this weekend, spoke toward the radio audience that uh, he gets to share with every day on his radio program in this neck of the woods, and Eric, it's just a great privilege to have you. It's been a huge blessing and privilege to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, you're tuckered out. You have to be, because you've been talking to people, signing books, speaking of services, being interviewed, and now you're being interviewed again. So, I am? What? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, That's seriously. what this is? Yeah. Oh, this is actually an intervention. You write too many books. In intervene. Go ahead. Intervene. Okay. So listen, I want to ask you, uh, speaking about Martin Luther, and you just put a whole new book on Martin Luther, a really great biography. Tell me a little bit about his marriage. There's all sorts of stories going around over the years. I don't know what's myth and what's not. Just about Luther's marriage. Was it a good marriage? I think it was a great marriage. Uh, it's pretty counterintuitive. Uh, he was 15 years older than his bride, Katie, and significantly more educated, had to be more brilliant because nobody's more brilliant than Martin Luther, but he mm -hmm. clearly respected and esteemed this woman and loved her in a way that it's just moving because he seems like such a take no prisoners uh, character but he was really tender and loving toward her and she loved him. I mean, it's just something so beautiful because it's not about a great romance, it's about uh, this mutual respect, it's, it's beautiful. And they had six kids together. You just get the impression generally, uh, and I think that comes across in my book, that they were um, a really wonderful pair. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned six kids. Did any of them go on to do ministerial things or? Yes, uh, w one of them did. It, it's actually, it's so complicated because two of them, uh, two of the girls died. Uh, the boys, one of them had some trouble uh, uh, and died in his 30s. Mm -hmm. Another one was a doctor. Uh, it's kind of funny because like, that's the kind of stuff that I'm trying to remember. I forgot those details because right. I, I didn't get to, um, you know, look at life after Luther very right, much, right, right. you know, but one of them, uh, Luther's line carried on, carries on till today. Really? There are people who can say, I'm a descendant of Martin Luther 500 years later. Wow. Uh, von Hindenburg, I mentioned this in the, in the book, uh, Hindenburg, uh, the, you know, the chancellor of Germany was uh, a descendant of Luther. So mm. it's kind of amazing. Wow. Yeah. Um, you you talked a little bit about him being a flamboyant character. Yeah. And I just want to kind of touch on that a little bit because that's fascinating that that he he shifted from very serious to a little more um, edgy, flamboyant, funny, yeah. Yeah. bigger than life. Yeah. And you even compared him a little bit to the president of the United States, Donald yeah. Trump. Yeah. Can you just kind of speak to that stylistic part of him? Well, yeah, it's very interesting because we all uh, have things that we like and don't like. And, you know, there's, there's parts of Luther which he became a very outspoken, blunt uh, character. And I think it was because he had suffered so much for truth that he almost wielded truth like a club. You know, he just thought, I'm not going to shy away from the truth, I need to speak the truth, even if it's blunt, even if it hurts, even if it offends. Um, and his friends, even at his funeral, in his eulogy, Melanchthon says something, you know, clearly even his friends didn't love this side of him. Huh. It was problematic. And it kind of does remind me of the president in a sense that even his allies and, and friends are like, just tone that down or don't tweet or don't, you know. <laughs> There's something about certain characters that they thrive on that. Sometimes it's for good, sometimes it's for ill. But Luther really saw his role uh, as, as somebody who had to uh, be blunt and that the, the finesse he could leave to others, that there were others like Melanchthon who were called to be more diplomatic. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's interesting just to see.